Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on ratio, writing in the form of 1 to n. In this tutorial we'll look at the reasons why we write in the form of 1 to n or n to 1 and how we can use this method in exam questions. So let's look at the principle behind it using chocolate. In this question it states if it costs £10 to buy 8 chocolate bars, how much will it cost to buy 12 chocolate bars? We now know 8 chocolate bars cost £10. So, to work out 1 chocolate bar, we simply divide by 8. However, because it's proportional, we must also divide the £10 by 8, giving us the price of 1 chocolate bar being 10 divided by 8 is £1.25. Now we know the price of one chocolate bar, we can work out the price of 12 chocolate bars. Simply, £1.25 multiplied by 12 gives us £15. This is what's known as the unitary method, and it's a technique used for solving a problem by first finding a single unit and then multiplying where necessary. Before moving on, you may need to remind yourself of those key features of ratio using our ratios video. This will help you with the next exam question. In this exam question, it states the ratio 2 cm to 5 m can be written in the form of 1 to n. And we're asked to find the value of n. Firstly, remember from our last ratio video, we need to make the units the same when writing a ratio. So this is written incorrectly as 2 centimeters to 5 meters has different units. So we're going to convert meters to centimeters. As they are in the same units, we can simply remove the centimeters so we have 2 to 500. Now we want the first part to be 1, so we simply divide both sides by 2. Now we have our first part is 1, so therefore n must be 250. Here we have an example of a question asking for 1 to n. So now let's look at an exam question asking for n to 1. This question states that a model is made of an Airbus A300 aeroplane. The length of the model is 36 centimeters and the length of the real aeroplane is 54 meters. Find the ratio of the length of the real aeroplane to the length of the model we're asked to give the ratio in the form of n to 1. Now reading the question we must write the ratio correctly. We write real to model. From here we simply substitute the values given. 54 meters to 36 centimeters is incorrect. We do not write a ratio with different units. So let's make the units the same. We have 5400 centimeters to 36 centimeters so now we can remove the units. Because the question wants us to find the second part of the ratio being 1, we simply divide both sides by 36. This gives us 150 to 1. Therefore, the value of n must be 150. So we've gone through the purpose of the unitary method and how we make 1 to n or n to 1. But now let's look at more difficult ratio questions, where we use the unitary method for problem-solving questions. One of the many great things about mathematics is how there are multiple ways to get a solution. For problem-solving questions, the most important thing is to have a clear strategy and understand what you are finding out and how it can help you answer the question. So let's look at another exam question. This question states that Chris is making a drink using 220 milliliters of water and 75 milliliters of juice. Emma makes a drink using 160 milliliters of water and 64 milliliters of juice. We're asked who has the most concentrated drink and we must give reasons for our answer. Firstly, let's write the ratio of water to juice for both Chris and Emma. From here, I'm going to substitute my values in and simply remove our units. Now, the strategy I want to use is to compare one part water to juice. So for Chris, I'm going to divide by 220 to both sides, giving me one part water to 0.341 parts juice. For Emma, to find one part water, I divide by 160, 
to give me one part water is 0.4 parts juice. Now you can see, for each one part of water, Emma has the most juice. So therefore, Emma has the most concentrated drink because for every one milliliter of water, she gets more juice. You could have used an alternative strategy whereby you found one part juice as opposed to one part water. Here, the working out is the same, but I've made one part juice for Chris by dividing by 75 to both sides. Here, I've made one part juice for Emma by dividing both sides by 64. You can see, one part juice requires less water for Emma. So therefore, Emma has the most concentrated drink because for every one milliliter of juice, she has less water. So you can see there are a couple of different ways to get the correct answer. As long as you have a clear strategy and understand the numbers, it's really your preference. For me, for this question, I prefer to find one part water to juice. In the next questions, sometimes finding 1 to n will help you more easily than finding n to 1. So knowing what you're asked for is very important. Now in this question it states, at a steady speed, a train travels 50 kilometers and uses 15 liters of petrol. At the same speed, what distance could be traveled using 18 liters of petrol? Now this part of the question is very important because it's assumed that everything is proportional and nothing changes. Now substituting our values, we have 50 kilometers to 15 liters. Given the question wants us to find 18 liters, using our unitary method, it's best to find one liter and then multiply by 18 to give 18 liters. So to find one liter, we simply divide both sides by 15, giving us an equivalent ratio of 10 over three kilometers to one liter. I'm going to leave it as a fraction so we can be more accurate. Now, to find 18 liters, I simply multiply by 18, giving me an equivalent ratio of 60 kilometers to 18 liters. Therefore, the train would travel 60 kilometers on 18 liters of petrol. Now let's look at a more complicated question. In this question, it states that the points A, B, C and D lie in order on a straight line. We know the ratio of AB to BD is 2 to 10 and AC to CD is 7 to 11. We're asked to work out the ratio of AB to BC to CD. Firstly, let's look at our parts for AB to BD. We have the ratio of 2 to 10 and we can write it in the form of 1 to n by simplifying our ratio. This gives us 1 to 5, a total of 6 parts. Now looking at the original question, we were given AC to CD. This gave us 18 parts. Now to make an easy comparison, let's make the parts the same. So I'm going to multiply the ratio of AB to BD by 3. This will give us a total of 18 parts. This allows us to make an easier comparison. Now both ratios have 18 parts for that easy comparison. We can illustrate the line with the points A, B, C, D. Here, I've simply inserted those ratio parts. A, B is three parts, illustrated here. B, D is 15 parts, illustrated here. A, C is seven parts, illustrated here and CD is 11 parts illustrated here. Now going back to our original question, it asked us to find the ratio of AB to BC to CD. So let's start with our easy ratio. We can clearly see that AB is three parts. Looking at CD, we have 11 parts. We need to work out the ratio of B to C. Given that B to D is 15, and C to D is 11, we can clearly see that BC must be four parts. So our final answer is three to four to 11. So in summary, in this tutorial, we've looked at the unitary method, ensuring we know how to write in the form of one to N or N to one, 
and recognising the importance of a strategy when tackling problem solving questions. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.